Hi there folks. In this video we're going to have a look at these vintage Savage 4 tenors. These are a sub-gauge adapter tube manufactured quite a few years ago by the Savage Arms Corporation. I think production of these stopped probably 30 odd years ago, but you will sometimes come across them on the used market, at gun shows, online, and so forth. And these, uh, these tubes were manufactured to adapt 12 gauge, 16 gauge, and 20 gauge shotguns to shoot the smaller 410 bore shell. There's a couple of different uh, styles of these tubes around. This is the later style of tube with uh, an aluminum barrel and a steel chamber end. The early ones were all steel and they were quite heavy so actually the later style with the aluminum barrel I think is preferable because they don't add quite so much weight to your gun. As I mentioned these are uh, of two-piece construction. We've got a blued steel chamber end here with a built-in sliding extractor. You can see the uh, the chamber end of the unit there and it will take the 410 tube like that the extractor mates up with the shell like that and this extractor here is pushed on by your gun's extractor or ejector depending on what your gun is set up with and we've got the aluminum barrel portion here and as far as I can tell these aluminum barrels are a pressure fit or a, an interference fit into the back end of the, uh, the steel chamber end let's have a look at the markings on these this side says Savage Arms Corporation, Westfield, Massachusetts, USA. Use only in 12 gauge gun. And this can be used in any length of chamber uh, of 12 gauge gun because the only portion of it which is actually chamber sized is this small piece at the end. So the rest of it, uh, it could go into a, you know, anything from a 2 inch chamber to a 3.5 inch. And on the other side of the barrel we've got some more markings. It says 410 bore proof tested. Savage. 3 inch chamber and that's referring to the chamber length of the adapter and it's got a patent number on it there and the model number which is 412F and like I said I've got two 20 gauge tubes and they have the same markings on each of them there's only one panel of uh, markings on these this says Savage 4 tenor model 412F Westfield Massachusetts 410 gauge 2.5 and, and 3 inch shells use in 20 gauge gun only and it's basically of the same construction other than uh, being a little bit smaller in diameter and having a uh, you know a smaller cut on the extractor to uh, adapt it to your shotgun there's the front end of the aluminum barrel these all have a rubber o-ring at the uh, at the front which is sitting in a groove and those are replaceable should something go wrong with them um, the rubber o-ring basically keeps this sub-gauge barrel centered in your bigger guns barrel to keep it from rattling around and being a, an awful annoyance. The front end of these tubes is also combed out a bit and I think that's probably done to limit any gas cutting action on uh, your shotgun's bore because there is still a fair amount of pressure behind the, uh, the shot and the wad when it leaves this barrel and having that coned out tends to direct the blast ahead as opposed to having it come out sideways if it was cut off square because you can actually cut a ring in the uh, the inside of your shotgun barrel if, uh, if you don't have that coned business going on so these are pretty well thought out. I fired quite a number of shells out of the these two 20 gauge tubes because I use them to shoot skeet and I probably put at least a thousand shells through those two tubes. Let's have a look down the bore of these you can see the, uh, the length of the chamber there and the transition to the bore portion. And I haven't noticed any particular wear on these. They seem to be holding up uh, quite well, with uh, even with all the use that they've seen. We'll have a peek down the, uh, the 12 gauge version. Pretty much the same thing. Probably a little bit of dirt in there somewhere. But... Okay, one very important point which I have to mention with regard to these tubes is that they are only uh, really usable in guns in which you can get at the breech end completely. Um, for instance, quite usable in any hinge action shotgun like this, a uh, over and under, single barrel, break action, side by side, double barrel, all of those types of guns are uh, adaptable to use these tubes because you have a completely unobstructed run at getting the tube into the gun. You have to be able to basically insert the entire tube into the gun 
And uh, if you can't do that, uh, you can't use these tubes. For instance, a, a pump action, a semi-auto, a lever action, uh, any other style of uh, action in which you cannot get at the, the breech in a completely free and unobstructed fashion, uh, these tubes won't work in those. So just something to be mindful of. Before you put these tubes into your gun, it's uh, important to put a little dab of grease on the, the uh, O-ring, because otherwise it's very difficult to get these things in and more importantly get them back out again. So I like to put just a little dab of uh, grease on the ring there. You don't need any kind of special grease, I just use some cartridge grease. You can use some fancy expensive gun grease if you feel like it. So once you've got a little bit of uh, grease or oil on the uh, tube, it's just a simple matter of inserting it into the barrel or you've got more than one tube into the barrels and you want to push it down and then have the extractor here get a good close up of that you want to have the extractor line up with the extractor or ejector of the shotgun so we can push that in you can see the extractor is lined up with the uh, 20 gauge extractor on this bakehouse now it's important to be careful when you're closing the gun up to make sure that the extractor is pushed in enough so as not to get caught on the breech face. You can see that it'll stick out a little bit here when it's being closed. You want to make sure that it doesn't catch on the top of the breech. In this case it corresponds with the breech and it gets pushed closed. But it may not do that on every gun so you want to be careful to make sure you don't break that extractor off. I don't know how uh, possible or impossible it would be to, uh, to get a replacement one. This is sort of the configuration which I like to hunt grouse with. Um, I like to use it in this basic shape because I can put a 20 gauge shell in the bottom barrel like that. We've got a 20 gauge shell in the bottom barrel and then I can put a 3 inch 410 in the top barrel. So for close up birds I can shoot with the 410 and not destroy too much of the meat and for further or longer range shots I can use the uh, the 20 gauge barrel so kind of a nice versatile combination and there's really no uh, there's really no danger of putting the wrong size shell in the wrong uh, hole because were you to drop a accidentally drop a 410 shell in it will fall completely out of the gun so there's really no risk there unlike carrying two gauges of shells which are close enough that uh, one could stop in the barrel if you put it in the wrong barrel these just fall all the way out and there's uh, really no risk at all all right, a little quick demonstration of this, uh, how this extractor system works here. We've got a shell which is uh, unprimed and resized and is obviously empty, so this is safe to use as a demonstration. So we'll put it into the adapter tube there. And if we look up really closely, we can see how the extractor on the adapter tube engages the rim of the shell. And when we close the gun up, it closes up quite nicely. If we were to fire a shot and open the gun up, you can see here how the, uh, the shell is pushed out the same way it would be if it was the original size shell for the gun. So, pretty good system um, in some ways. It's unfortunate that uh, when they made these, they made them with such a small size of extractor. They would have been a better system had they been a little more robust, a little bit bigger uh, component. But anyway, they seem to hold up fairly well as long as you are uh, careful about uh, closing the gun up and not catching the extractor on the breech face. And you can uh, you can kind of change how that uh, interaction of the breech face and the extractor works by turning the adapter around so that it strikes the breech face in uh, in different places. For instance, if you have the tube turned up like fairly high up so that the extractor sits in this position here it's in much more uh, danger of catching the breech face you can see that the uh, it's much more likely to catch the breech face when it's rotated out here versus if you turn the adapter more to the center line of the gun with it uh, more towards the center line of the gun it's much less likely to strike and get caught on top of the breech up here it's going to strike the breech face instead of catching up on the very top. So, just something to be uh, careful of when you put these tubes in the gun. 
When the uh, the tubes and the gun are clean, usually you can grab a hold of the extractor and just pull the whole business right out. That can become a little bit more problematic when you shoot it a lot because some carbon will build up around the o-ring and it'll make it a little harder to get out of the uh, out of the barrel. So if it gets carboned up a bit you will probably need to have a cleaning rod with you and you have to insert that in through the muzzle and press the tube out from the muzzle. So just something to be aware of if you want to go change these out in the middle of a big shoot you might want to carry a cleaning rod or something similar with you for to facilitate that. Here's another example of a gun action which is adapted to be used with these insert tubes. This is my 20 gauge Remington rolling block and because you can get at the breech end of this unobstructed you can actually use one of these tubes in it. There's a little bit of a trick to getting it in because there's a clearance cut on the bottom of the tube which uh, has to be kind of lined up with the uh, rolling block but if you get it lined up properly you can get the uh, adapter past it and then by carefully rotating it you can line it up with the uh, extractor on the rolling block and give you a close view of that you can see that it fits quite nicely in the rolling block and we've adapted this rolling block to shoot uh, 410 Okay, some final thoughts on these 410 adapters by Savage. Um, first is availability and price. Uh, I would recommend if you come across these at a decent price, you know, by all means pick them up. I would uh, not hesitate to pay, you know, 80 bucks, 75, 80 bucks for one of these things if I saw it for sale. Um, I think they're, they're certainly worth that much money. I have lucked out and I think these ones I got for considerably less than that, but um, you can see them for quite high values on the internet, especially if they're in the original cardboard box. They become more of a collector's item as opposed to a, a, a user's item. The performance of the shells out of these short tubes is, is very good. You can expect uh, 90 to 95 percent of the velocity out of these tubes as you would get out of a full-length 410 barrel. So they're not uh, drastically affected by the, the shorter length of the tube. The velocity is one thing, the pattern is another matter altogether. The pattern that you get out of your, your individual gun will vary depending upon the, the choke that's in your, your bigger gauge gun. So although it's, it's uh, somewhat counterintuitive, the, uh, the big choke in your, your existing gun barrel will actually have an effect upon the patterns thrown out of these small tubes because the shot charge emerges from the tube and kind of bunches up into your, into your bigger gauge barrel and then is is sort of affected by the uh, by the the choke that's that's there. So you pretty much have to try it for yourself to see what kind of patterns you get. But as a good rule, they will shoot a, a pattern which is similar to or a little less than the choke of the uh, the host gun. So you have to pretty much try it for yourself to see what it'll do. Anyway, that's about all I can do with a uh, kind of a bench top uh, review of these tubes and perhaps at some point in the future I will get around to doing a shooting video and show these things in action. Maybe we'll chronograph some shells out of them to show you the uh, the velocities that we get and maybe we'll shoot some patterns with them as well at some point in time in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Have a good day. We will hopefully talk to you later.